Oh, honey, isn't this just a beautiful and bountiful meal to celebrate us being rich? Oh, I know, dear. Alfred! I need more wine. Can't you tell I'm parched? I know. The help is not what they used to be. All right, let's dig it. Oh, God, it's the child. Why did we even have it? What do you want? Our food? <laughs> Not enough! <laughs> Alfred! Take it away! It's spoiling my appetite. I'm so angry. I can scream. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Repeat after me. If you want children, make sure to feed them. Yes, you got it. Okay, so we all understand that, except for the eight passenger parents. Yeah, all right, so. You should say, okay, and be grateful. I have an update for you guys. If you are behind on the whole eight passenger things, I did a video on YouTube about them. It's linked below. You know, the whole family influencer. The parents showed how to be a good parent on the internet. I am gonna say one nice thing. And that is, you took your lashing very well. And one of those parents, the mom, is in jail. For what? Child abuse. Who would have thought? Not me, and not the whole internet who watched their videos when they were up before they got banned from YouTube. You said you would not go into the kitchen, and you did. You felt entitled to take what was in the fridge. Anyway, the mom was only half of it, okay? Last video, we were all questioning, well, why isn't the papa, father, in jail as well? Because he was there while they were all filming. He was doing the thing. He was having all the fun with Ruby. Well, for a while now, Kevin Frank has been playing the victim. At least that's how his lawyer has, or attorney has been pushing it. Randy, thanks so much for coming here on Sidebar. I think the best place to start is, how's your client doing right now? He's, he's uh, busy, he's struggling, uh, trying to make sense out of what's happened to him in the last 13 months and uh, kind of coming out of a fog. So in other words, he was completely taken off guard by these allegations, completely shocked? Absolutely shocked. He knew nothing that was going on. In fact, him and Ruby have been separated, according to the lawyer, for over a year, I think 13 months. Why were they separated? What was the catalyst? Oh, I probably shouldn't go into that. His attorney was saying how Kevin is caring, he cares for these children. He had no idea what was going on. Did he ever believe that the kids were in danger? He had nothing to indicate that. And the reason why him and Ruby broke up is because he didn't agree with one little thing when it came to parenting. They had a difference of opinion about their family. So all these years he's been fine with what's going on until recently. It's her. She's the vile woman. Definitely not him. It's all her. Was he calling the kids? Because I think what a lot of people are looking at this and they're wondering, well, what did he know? So he might have been living separately from her for 13 months, but he wasn't calling the kids, checking in on the kids, seeing how they're doing. He's the father. If you read everything that's in the media, he's getting raked over the coals for that. But what? people don't understand is that he was trying to preserve his marriage. He's innocent. He's a poor man in this big, big world. He was taking direction from her. And he just wants to reconnect with his kids and have them in his house. She's the one who asked him to leave the house. Well, recently the father who wants to reconnect with his kids tried to charge his eldest daughter who cut ties with both him and his wife because their parenting practices was a bit, just a little bit too harsh. You know, who knew kids don't like being bound by rope, wrapped in duct tape, thrown in a room and restricted their food for however long their overlords feel is right. Mushing that will not ever be repeated nor recorded. Well, Kevin tried to charge that exact daughter with burglary. That's the caring dad we're talking about? Wow. And you know what? They said, we can't do that, you Walgreens discount brand Dr. Evil. <laughs> Let me break down the drama for you. And if you enjoy this type of drama and you don't enjoy scrolling through TikTok and reading all these stories that will melt your brain, hit the subscribe button. I'm here all week. Let me rot my brain for you. It's literally my job. Okay, so this all happened because shortly after the arrest of Ruby, some family members were actually able to go back into the house and, and obtain some things. Now, the reason they were able to do this was because police had to break down the front door of the house to get to obtain two children 
two children that were bound by some duct tape ropes, all nourished, very thin. So this is where Sherry, the oldest daughter, comes in. She goes back to the home that she grew up in, obtains clothes and personal items for two sisters that she was going to be taken care of against Ruby's wishes. Ruby did not want the daughter to care for the children that these police found. She wanted someone that she could trust, similar beliefs as her, someone that would care for her children just how she would care for them. And that woman's name is Pam Botcher, who is actually <laughs> just, you know, Ruby's business partner. Pam Botcher. Pam Botcher. Pam Botcher. Pam Botcher. Yeah, she's part of Reflections, you know, the business that's getting investigated. Here's a screenshot from a page that lists Pam as a business team member with Connections. She's described as the president of Connections Foundation. Has all these allegations, people are coming out from the woodwork talking about their experience with them. Pam Botcher, when I was living with Jody, Pam Botcher was around. She was Jody's like best friend. And uh, the top two people in the business are in jail for child abuse. Well, this new character that we just unlocked is the president of Be Joe Kids Today. I'm sorry, not Be, oh, like, oh, thank you for reminding me. My notes wrong. She's the president of Connections, where they absolutely love children. Pam is the president of Connections Foundation. She has a degree in interpersonal communications, a mother of seven, and a grandmother of 14. She has served for six years in the Tim Panagos Symphony Board. What the f does that have to do with absolutely anything? Does she beat the children with a trombone? Does she sing them a sonnet like Mother Gothel before she locks them in a tower? What does that have to do with anything? Why do they tell us this information? I don't care about this. So Pam, according to Ruby, is very trustworthy. At least according to Jody and Ruby. I mean, they love they love her. They go on these retreats together. Get them on these retreats. These look like these look like fun. They look like they're very connected. They teach other women and people in general how to be good parents. They talk about how they duct tape little Sherry. And now she has the audacity to be no contact with them and how they use today just doesn't respect their elders anymore. But anyway, Pam loves connections. She goes on vacations with them. I love taking the parenting class. My daughter was going to take the class and ask me if I would take it with her. And I thought, well, I've, I'm pretty much done parenting. I, my kids are all raised and she really encouraged me to take it with her. And I am so grateful that I did because I learned the principles that she was going to be teaching in her home so I could reinforce them when I was around my grandchildren. And it's been really a great experience. And that's why Ruby wanted Pam to be the caretaker for her children to continue the Ruby and Jody way. But get this, the two girls that Ruby wanted to get taken care of by Pam actually did want to go with Pam. They didn't want to go with their sister. And some of you might be saying, well, why? Well, this makes perfect sense, at least to me, because they are pro they're young children. They probably, the parents, probably they probably paint this picture that Sherry is not living for God anymore. She ran off the path of how we are supposed to live. And do you know where that path leads us, little children? Oh yes, it leads them straight to the fiery pits of hell. God comes back to us, she will burn forever. <laughs> And the grown-ups laugh and laugh and the children look like this. And so they paint this picture that Sherry, evil, Pam, savior, Pam works for Jesus, Sherry works for the devil, and now she wants to take care of what little child would not be frightened. I mean, if I grew up young and I grew up the way that these children did, fearing God, fearing the burning pit of hell, seeing your sister leave, and then your parents saying that she's not living in her truth, she's lost and she's gonna die. She's dancing with the devil! And the police are saying that you're gonna go stay with Sherry who's dancing with the devil and now you think you're gonna have to dance with them too. I'd be frightened. But Sherry got custody and Pam didn't. So that's why Sherry was going back to the house to get items the two young girls would need so that they can live and she can properly take care of them. She wasn't by herself. This was all regulated. A DCFS caseworker and police were at the scene at the house while Sherry was there. She didn't just, you know, sneak in Sims burglar style and, and take things. Why? Because they thought Kevin would probably have a huge problem with Sherry coming to the house. And guess what? He did. He was pissed. You know, pissed at the daughter that he said that he wants to reconnect with. Hmm, interesting. And Kevin ended up showing up, but after the fact, every, every, everyone was already gone. He comes back to the house, a house that he hasn't stepped into for about 13 months. But you know, the old witch is gone, so he has free reign to get back, to get his Kevin feet back in that home, and that's what he did, but a little too late. So he shows up, doors knocked over, and he's saying, oh my gosh, I need to call the police. So he calls the police and reports a burglarly, burglary. And the police inform him, no sir, it was not that. 
your wife's in jail, okay, from connections, you know, the place you're wearing the shirt. Yeah, see, you know it. So we had to kick down the door, we were serving a warrant, and had to collect two more of the children, the malnourished children in the basement under your wife's care. And your daughter, your oldest daughter, is taking care of two of those children, and she's getting the things to the kids so that they can live. Okay, everything's fine, you can calm down. But Kevin didn't calm down. He then wanted to file charges against Sherry. He said, she stole from me. Police, get that woman. Here's part of the police report. I responded by phone to Kevin Frank, who wanted to report a burglarly motherfucker burglary at the home. Kevin said he knows the home had been burglarized due to the door being kicked in and damaged. So he was upset that there was some electronics missing with electronic journals. He believes his oldest daughter Sherry is responsible due to a statement she made in court that day. Wait a minute, so his only worry was an electronic journal that's missing? Like content? That shows him doing something that would make his lawyer statement that Kevin is such an innocent little bald man and not actually Dr. Evil. <laughs> Untrue? So the police report went on and said that Kevin said that Sherry is not allowed in the house. The same daughter that he's saying that he wants to reconnect with. Got it. She decided to walk the path from Jesus and into the devil's land. We do not let the devil in this house. Just kidding. He didn't say that part, but in my head, that's what I think he said. But he did say she's not allowed in there, which I have to say, Kevin, you aren't allowed in there. Why is that? Because she told him it was better uh, that they needed to work on their marriage and needed to keep their family together, but that everything was better off with him not in the home and not communicating with the children. Attorney man, man who's saying that, that Kevin is innocent and loves his children and wants to reconnect, except for with Sherry, apparently. You might want to shut this man up. He's talking a little too much. It's very suspicious that he is worried about some electronic journals. Why is he so pressed about these journals? Why did he just all of a sudden show up looking for these journals after 13 months now that his wife is in jail? It must have been pretty thick hot and juicy. T must have been piping to press charges against his daughter and sue the police officers for not pressing charges. And I can't wait to hear about it because shortly after Kevin's little outburst, Cherry brought the items right on over to Springville police. But he did get them back shortly after she brought them there. And I'm sure if there was anything on them though, Sherry saw and then probably reported to the police. But you know, the funniest part is that these people, including the attorney, just write their own truth. Doesn't matter what the records say. They just scribble out what happened in their head that will make them look the best. And the attorney said that all of this, the police reports, him trying to press charges, him calling the police, this never happened even though you can Google it. There are police reports saying that Kevin called in, ring, ring, hello, my daughter stole an electronic journal and she needs to be charged with burglary. But that never happened. Kevin Frankie is an angel. According to the attorney, what's actually happening is that Sherry and Kevin are working together and are resuming a loving and healthy father-daughter relationship. The police lied, kind-hearted man that knew nothing of the sort of what his wife was doing behind closed doors. Kevin Frankie has never been accused of physically abusing anyone, including his children, nor have there ever been any allegations that he was doing that. Except for the fact that he was in the videos, he's also wearing the shirt. Not good, Kevin. That is not, why, why are you wearing the shirt? And I personally cannot wait for his downfall. I will get so much joy, pure, happy joy, like standing in Disneyland, watching him crumble and his lawyer eat his words and also crumble. He doesn't condone that kind of thing. He's a good dad. I am looking forward to it. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the update for today. Make sure to check out the last video of a woman who says, you know what? Hotel hallways are not big enough for fat people. And you guys need to, you guys need to change that. And she in fact has a whole list of demands that she thinks that hotels need to do to make life easier for fat people to roll freely down the hallways. That's the last video. Check it out, it's all linked below. You guys, thank you so much for being here. Make sure to be good, okay? Just be a good person. Feed your kids. And I'll see you guys next time. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels, too. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a very lot of fun. Growing up is just a trap.